What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, thanks to Yellow Park, we're going to be checking out their Transformers Rise of the Beasts Cheetor AMK Series Model Kit. Now, if you would like this or any of their previously released characters, then be sure to check out the links down below and use the discount code Prime vs. Prime at checkout. Now, as we check out the packaging up front, we have two awesome CG renders, one of Cheetor fully maximized into his robot mode and looking way more expressive than how he actually appeared in the movie. And as we check out the back of the box, it again gives you quite a brief overview of the assembly process, but it is super straightforward. Amazing for beginners or for those who basically just want a Transformers action figure. And there are two killer product shots of Cheetor from both the front and the back looking insane. This set also includes an upgrade kit for their previously released Rise of the Beast Bumblebee. So now we can fully weaponize him up with those two Stinger Blasters. So now let's maximize Cheetor into his robot mode and stack him up again. Optimus Primal. And bang, here we have Cheetor fully maximized into his robot mode. And whilst unfortunately we never saw much of this guy when it came round to the actual Rise of the Beast movie, from some of the very brief scenes that he did feature in, this figure again appears to be pretty spot on. As we check out the details, I really thought a great update when compared to his OG Beast Force design. Most of these Maximals were incredibly sleek, agile, yet savage looking, and I think that has been brilliantly translated into this Cheetor. Check out some of the details that we have here for the chest. The rib cage is by far one of my favorite parts of this design. It just looks so savage, which talking of, check out the beast mode claws, which become the spiked knuckle dusters for him to use at his mercy in robot mode. It would have been amazing to have actually seen him deploy these bad boys on the battlefield to slice and dice up some Terracons with, but maybe in the next live action film. And the leg design as well is just so incredibly sleek. The way all of these mechanized panels come together, I think looks so cool. And as we check him out, out here from the back the spinal column as ever i think is looking so wicked check out some of those internal gunmetal components it really is just such a brilliant design and if these characters are to make their resurgence in the next live action movie then i really hope we can see way more of their robot forms because whilst their beast modes are without a doubt incredible i really think their robot modes hold a lot of on-screen potential now, as we check out Cheetor's savage weaponry, we see the return of his iconic staff weapon, which we do see him use a fair amount in the Rise of the Beast film. Now, this can be split into two individual blades, or you can combine it to form a larger, almost trident weapon, which I think looks so incredibly sick, with the figure kind of catapulting it through the air to impel the Terracons. Now, Cheetor, unlike Scourge and their upcoming Rhinox, unfortunately doesn't feature fully articulated fingers, which, to be fair, I'm not too annoyed about, especially considering the design is way more slim than both of those characters. So to kind of throw it back to their first wave of Rise of the Beast releases, Cheetor includes an array of different swap-out hands. So up first, we get basically a pair of fists, which can also double as the staff-holding hands. There is then a pair of dynamic hands which are awesome, especially for getting this guy into some of those running poses. And then finally, at least when it comes to Cheetor, there are also a pair of relaxed hands. But that's not all because Cheetor also doubles as an upgrade kit for their AMK series Bumblebee. Now when I very first reviewed this guy I really only had one complaint and that was that Bumblebee included none of his weaponry as seen in the movie. So Yolo Park have fixed that mistake and have fully decked B out not only with two Stinger Blasters but with his iconic battle mask which is looking brilliant. So this figure is now pretty much perfect and those Stinger Blasters are looking sick in terms of detail. They're super easy 
easy to swap on and off. You know, it's basically a similar system to the ball jointed fists. The battle mask, however, is definitely a little more tricky as you have to basically remove the scalp of Bumblebee. Now, the second time I did this, unfortunately, it did snap one of the pegs on the inside, which in some ways I'm kind of glad about because it has made swapping the heads way easier. But in some ways, I wish maybe Yellow Park could have just included an entire interchangeable head instead of basically just the face plate, as I think that would have made swapping between the two looks way easier. But besides that, B is now looking like an absolute savage. Pew, 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 pew. Now, checking out Cheetor's posability, as he is without a doubt the most agile looking Maximal, it is sick to see him fully decked out with all of the POA that you would expect from a non-transforming Transformer. So, in addition to the head and the neck both being on ball joints, the head has this additional hinge joint which allows for an amazing range looking up. It can then look down, it can tilt side to side, rotate both left to right. The neck guard is also on a ball joint, although its range of motion is a little limited, but at least it's an extra point of articulation. The shoulders will crunch back backwards, they'll crunch forwards, hinge up, hinge down. The shoulder pad will move out to the side, which allows the arm to kick out roughly to that far. You could maybe push it slightly further, but then you do run the risk of the shoulder pad popping clean off. There is a bicep cut, a double jointed elbow, which can bend way past 90. As mentioned beforehand, the fingers are not fully articulated, but there is a ball joint here at the wrist, so this will hinge forwards and backwards and can rotate all the way around. In terms of the torso, this will crunch back, it will crunch forwards, it will rock side to side slightly and rotate left to right, although your main point of articulation, if you want him going side to side, lays in the waist joint. So for this, you are going to want to spin around here to the back, take Cheetor's ass plate, pull this here forwards, as this is on a ball and a hinge joint, which allows for a fully uncompromised waist joint. That is incredibly awesome. The hips are on drop down joints, so these can move all the way forwards to allow for a terrific high kick. That just by itself is insane. They will then kick back roughly to that far. To be fair, they can probably go even further than the forwards range so that is brilliant they will then kick out to the side there is a great thigh cut a double joint here at the knee which again can bend way past 90 and then finally in terms of the ankles these can rock forwards they can rock backwards even further if you take this armor kind of slide it back so that's brilliant they can rotate left to right rock side to side and then finally he's also packing a tiny piece of toe pivot articulation which i thought was insane brilliant articulation definitely up to par with some of their previous releases but to see what Cheetor is truly capable of, now let's put him through the pose test. And checking out some comparisons, on the right hand side we have Yolo Park's Optimus Primal. And right now I think Yolo Park are absolutely killing it when it comes to affordable non-transforming figures. Both of these only retail for $30 and they look insane. Almost perfect recreations of how we very briefly saw both of them in the Rise of the Beast movie. And with the release of their upcoming Rhinox, that is pretty much going to give us the three main Maximals from the film. Whilst I love the way they look in their robot form, I would really love to see what Yolo Park can do when it comes to their base modes. Next up, we have Cheetor's wave mate, Terracon Scourge, who I still think is by far one of the best entries in this line. He just looks like an absolute beast. Here's their Rise of the Beast, Optimus Prime, which just by himself looks wicked, but I can't help but say I am so excited for Rhinox, not only for the figure, but for the upgrade kit, because Rhinox is finally going to give this Optimus Prime some actual firepower. It will include include both of those arm cannons and the Energon blades, which we did see him use to slice and dice on most of those Terracons with in the Rise of the Beast movie. Making his upgraded comeback, we have Yellow Park's Bumblebee, which is looking wicked fully decked out with those arm cannons and the battle mask. And for some Studio Series Maximals, here we have the Leader Class Optimus Primal, Voyager Class Rhinox, and finally, Cheetor. Now, obviously, there are huge differences between the two. One transforms, one doesn't. One was based on the final CG design, whereas this one, I believe, was more focused on the concept art. It's still a really good figure. You know, I ranked it quite highly when it came to my end of year studio series video, but clearly there are some inaccuracies. One of the big ones being the color. I mentioned in my original review that I just thought it was too dark compared to what we had seen at the time. And with this Yolo Park release, again, I think that's kind of backed up. 
he really was much lighter in the movie. So in some ways, I'm hoping maybe Hasbro will reissue this guy in some proper movie accurate colors. I think going forwards though, I'm likely to keep the Studio Series Maximals in their base modes and then have these YOLO Park ones as the stand-ins for their robot forms. I think in terms of a display, that would look pretty sick. And so, wrapping up on this review for the YOLO Park Transformers Rise of the Beasts AMK Series Cheetor. Another fantastic entry into the line, superb robot mode, the most accurate version of this character that we've so far seen released, incredible articulation, amazing accessory loadout, especially their upgrade kit for their previously released Bumblebee. As I've mentioned in some of my past YOLO Park reviews, I think for the price point of around $30, these are absolutely destroying the action figure competition. Yolo Park at the moment are on fire and I cannot wait for their upcoming Rhinox and their Wave 3. If you are interested in getting this guy for your collection, then definitely be sure to check out the links down below and use that discount code Prime vs Prime. I want to thank you all so much for watching and until my next review, transform and roll out!